Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> I felt that anointing on me. Man. Hey, Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Man, it's, I feel like it's like a, such a special day to, to speak the word of God because it's like a day of relationship. You know, we have a, a newly engaged couple. Um, uh, pastor said it's scary exciting. I like to say it's exciting scary because at first you're so excited. And then, you know, it gets a little bit scary. Um, and then it gets uh, exciting again. But it's just, you know, it's you're married. So, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Congrats, guys. That's amazing. It's probably the best thing. Um, um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna release a little um, something to you because when I was sitting there, I feel like the Lord instantly spoke to me when Pastor pointed out. So I'm like, um, yeah. So no, you don't have to record it. It's it's very simple, but um, it's just I heard right away. And I, it's it's a re- something I've heard. You know, sometimes God speaks to you about certain people you know and and that's what he that's what he does we're all his children and sometimes he could uh you know point to you uh about another person and you could you know release that word unto them and they'll bless them and i feel like god is um he just was kind of telling me about um uh about you dan that uh, you have an anointing of david on your life and i know he knows that already and um And I feel like, and I feel like uh, God was saying that you will walk in it. And you know, the anointing of David is amazing because he was he was a worshiper, and not only because he was just a worshiper, he was also a king, and he he was called young into ministry, and he, you know, um, he was one of those guys that a pastor wouldn't always pick right away because you know he he was just spending time with the Lord, he was tending the sheep, and then there's always these guys that are like up front in front of pastor's face, they want a position, you know. And, and, and God said, no, you have, an, you have another son and his name is David and I have chosen him. And I feel like God chosen you um, even when you were younger and that uh, you, will, you will walk in this anointing. And in the last, I don't want to say in the last days because I feel like that get, gets thrown around right now a lot. And it is the last days. Since Jesus left, it, it's the last days. Come on now. Do I have a witness in the house? Come on. All right, tough crowd. Anyways, it's the last days, right, since Jesus left. And uh, the Bible says the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. And, and I feel like the anointing of David um, is going to be really important. And we need people like, like Dan um, in these days because they will lead people into the presence of God. And, and David, you know, everybody knows this, uh, this phrase, David says, there's one thing that I seek. There's only one thing that I want. After trying a lot of different things, I was a king, a ruler of all things. There's one thing that I seek is to be in the presence of God. And I think God has given you, I don't think, I know God has given you a wife, come on, who is a helper, who is also after his heart, okay, who will help you. It's the anointing of David is not just for a man. It is an anointing of David is for your life. So I'm just releasing that over you guys that you have the you both have the anointing of David and and you will you will you will lead people into the presence of God and I feel like God is obviously giving you talents and what God is going to begin to do in his life and I'm telling you right now is that it's not just going to be a gift it's not just going to be a talent but the presence of God is going to come upon them as they as they whether they're on stage or maybe they're in a home group or small group or whatever they are but as they as they try to uh, bring the presence of God the very presence of the Holy Spirit will come upon them so I just released that over you in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a word out here. No, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, and um, the, the amazing thing is that he won't just lead worship. Like a lot of times... You know, people look at worship like leaders and they'll say, oh, you know, we need you to lead worship or we need you on stage or same thing about preachers or whatever. But, but um, it's not just that he's a, a worship leader. He is a leader. Amen. He's not just a worship leader, okay. He has on his heart to share. He's also a preacher of the word of God. He could move in prophetic. Um, and that's just the anointing of David on his life. So it's not that only when he worships, the anointing will come. But as he leads... You know, so I'm encouraging you, if you want to lead, you know, the anointing of God will fall through your life. Amen. All right. That's awesome. I, I, I love this. This is great. Um, uh, I'm not actually going to be preaching today. Um, 
I'm going to be sharing the Word of God. Um, you know, I feel like I don't really like the word uh, uh, preach because I feel like when you, when you, when somebody, when the pastor calls you, say, hey, and a lot of, a lot of times pastor called me in the previous church and like, hey, do you want to preach next Sunday? And I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to preach. Can I share instead? Because <laughs> preaching, it, it, to me, it feels like you have to get uh, prepared for like this one sermon and, you know, you're, you're, you're dedicating a time like, all right, well, it's Saturday. I probably should sit down, read the Bible. And it seems like you're getting ready to preach and to, you know, minister church because someone asked you to, right? You're just, you're, you're spending a little bit of time with the Lord just to get yourself prepared enough uh, so you won't be embarrassed when you grab the microphone and preach the Word of God. Come on. And so, to me, I always feel like I would rather share because when I'm sharing, I'm sharing my heart. And I'm sharing whatever is in the moment, whatever God placed. And, you know, of course you're going to take time and you're going to write things down. But a lot of times during worship, I don't know about you, but during worship, God can speak a word to you. Come on. Witness in the house. Come on. Okay. All right. So, yeah, and sometimes at worship, why worship is so important. Why do we, you know, sometimes stand here for 45 minutes or an hour? Because we're trying to connect to God's heart. We're trying to see what is on his heart. I love the song. I, I absolutely love the song. I, I don't need anything else. You are my one thing. And there's a lot of songs out there that are very wordy. They have a lot of words like, you know, you could, sometimes when you're singing, you're like, is this about a person or is this about Jesus, you know? But I love songs that are concentrated on him. I feel like when we, when we give him glory during worship, he starts uh, speaking back to us. And, and so to me, I, you know, I, I, I try to get prepared and I try to spend time with the Lord as much as I can during the week. But sometimes the Lord will speak in, in a moment and I feel like we all should be um, open to that. Because uh, if God ever spoke to you, okay, if he ever, you're right, the microphone does sound different. I'm like thinking about it. It sounds a little bit different. Yeah, I, I'm not, okay. It's, it's, it's new things. Uh, yeah. All, God creates all new things. All right. <laughs> but. A lot of times, you know, when you, um, you know, when pastor asks you to say something in a microphone, you know, you, you people tend to uh, categorize themselves as, okay, well, I'm not a preacher. Okay, well, God did not call me to preach. Actually, I'm a worship leader. Actually, I'm just an usher or I do sound in the back. Okay, but if God ever spoke to you, if he ever tugged on your heart, okay, if you ever had a conversation with God, he has put something inside of you that you can share because you heard from the mouth of God. Okay, so, and I believe every single person heard from God one way or the other. God spoke to your heart. Come on. God, God, God touched you at one point or another. So that means you are qualified, okay. You are qualified. You could come up here, okay. It doesn't have to be just me or pastor or Adolf or some other people. You could share what God has placed in your heart. Because, because the Bible says that, uh, the way to the Father, okay, is through Jesus. And when we are all in Jesus, we have a way into the Father. And that means the Father can speak to all of his children. There's no one more special than the other. There's certain pe people call for certain things, but there's not one more special than the other. That means every person in this place can share the Word of God. You could share what is on your heart. It doesn't have to be 40 minutes long. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes long. It doesn't have to be an hour long. It could be more than five minutes. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's all about sharing uh, the Father's heart and, and, and releasing what God has placed in your heart. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, that comes to mind, it says, uh, this is where testimonies are so powerful, right? Because what is the test? why is the testimony so powerful? What do you guys think? Why is the testimony so powerful? It's real. It's an experience, right? Like if you heard a, a T.D. Jakes preaching, right, the Word of God, you're like, wow, that's fire. And I'm going to repeat after him, right? And so you come out and you preach the Word of God and it's like, it, it's yes, we agree with this Word. But it doesn't carry the influence of, of, of God in that Word. Because it was the revelation that was given to another person. So... So when you come out, and it might not be super eloquent, or you might not have the verses together, but when God plays something on your heart and you release it, you share it, now it has influence because you live through it. You have an experience. So when you come out and you speak out of experience, it speaks to other people because they can relate to you. Come on now. When you speak to, uh, to other people and you share something that you've went through yourself, 
uh, it's, it's an experience, so it not just sets you free because you're, you have a testimony, right? It's a, it could be a healing or a revelation, but it also can touch the hearts of other people because they can relate to you. And the Bible says that they have overcame him, right, the devil, what, by the blood of the lamb, right? So you need the blood of Jesus and by the word of what? Their testimony. The testimony. The testimony has power. And then the Bible says they love not their lives unto death. That's a powerful word. That's a powerful. I believe every single person in this place is a testimony. Everybody. And sometimes it might seem like, well, what is my testimony? I lost my keys. You know, I prayed. Actually, I have a testimony. I was looking for my one of my headphones, you know, AirPods. Have you ever lost one? My goodness, man. They should have like a GPS tracker on those things. I lost one. And so every time, and I was looking for it. And I'm like, man, I can't find it. Like I looked everywhere. And I'm like, okay, somebody stole it. It's okay. I have one. You know what I mean? I'll give one to someone that doesn't have one. You know, I'll share whatever, you know. Uh, but, and then I was praying about it. And then, like, and I, I was like, oh, man, I was kind of frustrated. I was going, I was walking outside to my car, and I'm like, Lord, just, just find this thing. Like, come on, you know where it is. Like, you're, you're omnipotent. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere. You know where this thing is. Like, I don't want to buy another one. These are 200 bucks, right? And so I'm like, Lord, like, can you just point it out where it is? And I sit in my car, and something just tells me inside. Just open up this thing. I open it, and, and it's right there. And I'm like, come on. Like, this is amazing, you know, and, like, it, it, it doesn't always have to be like a deliverance uh, a testimony. It doesn't have to always be a healing testimony because God cares about the, the smallest things in our lives. He created all. The Bible says that he cares about even like the flowers in the field. He cares about these things. He feeds the birds of the air, the Bible says. So how much more are you worth to him? And so when you think to yourself, well, God doesn't care about these things. You almost like, you almost sort of minimize the blood of Jesus that died for you. You sort of minimize how much he cares for you. Because if it was up to him, he would say, listen, I care about all of your things. All of your possessions and all these things. I do care about you. I care about your food and drink. I care about all these things. He's our father who is in heaven. I'm just almost done with my introduction. Come on. <laughs> I told you I'm going to share. Come on. So, you know, preaching, you're like, you have to go by a script. You know, you got... Um, some people do, but I can't do it. Anyways, and so, and so God cares about these things. He's a father. That, that he says that do not even worry about the next day. Can you, you can't even uh, turn one of your hairs gray. You can't even, you can't even do any of these things. And I, I care about my children. That's what the Bible says. And so we need to understand that, A, every one of us has a testimony. God speaks to us and, 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 and he speaks to our hearts. A lot of times maybe we're not listening. Maybe we're not giving him time. This is why it's so important during worship. When we're in worship, okay, it's not just the worship team that's worshiping. We are all worshiping. Okay, we are all from front to back. We are all worshiping the king of kings. Okay, we're not worshiping um, something. We're not worshiping an idol. There's not like a, you know, a statue here or anything like that that we're looking at and we're worshiping and it doesn't even reply back to us. And we're like, well, that thing is not talking to me. Why am I worshiping it? I, I, I'm asking it to do something for me. It's not returning anything back to me. It's not speaking to me. Why do I worship it? Right? We are worshiping a living God. We are worshiping the King of Kings. I don't know if you guys, uh, I know that on Instagram right now, there's just a lot of these things going on with Israel and things are posting and this there's this one gentleman he was um he was an ISIS fighter and and which is a wild testimony he you know he was kind of I don't know where he was he was in his house or whatever but um I think he was uh, I mean he, he murdered a lot of people and he, he says that and then he was I think he was doing like his own ritual prayer and then he felt someone tap on his shoulder and he's and he's like and he's like who is this like what what's going on and then uh the voice said I forgive you and he goes, this is very profound. He goes, what do you mean forgive me? How can, how can someone forgive me? Because uh, Quran says, uh, Allah says that uh, you can't know if you're forgiven until the day of judgment. So they live, right, in this, in this stressed environment depending on how they live their life, they're going to come to their God and see, based on their deeds, if he's going to forgive them. And he says, so he's like, I couldn't understand these words. How can, is this God speaking to me? But the Quran says that I can't know if I'm forgiven until the day of judgment. And he says, 
how are you, how are you, who is this that you're speaking to me? What is your name? And he says, I am Jesus Christ, the living God. And it's a real testimony. And the guy just, he's bawling, crying, saying his testimony. God forgave him. He spoke to him. He could do these things. And, and this person, think about this, he was not yet even in the kingdom. He has not received the blood yet. And God cares for people. He wants to touch people. He gave you a testimony. He wants to share his heart with you. If God can speak to a, a, a ISIS terrorist, come on, he's speaking to us. He's speaking to us. He's alive. He's the living God. And that's who we're worshiping. The moral of the story is that he is the living God. And he was like, I will worship you then. Because he is able to forgive sins. He is able to restore your life. He is able to heal you. He's able to deliver you. He's able to anoint you like he anointed Dan. For a greater work that you will do, the Bible says. And that's why when we come to worship, when we come here on Wednesday, we're not just gathering in, 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 in with no hope. We gather together because we have hope in Him, right, who promised us, who will restore all things unto Him. And so when we come to, when we come to during worship, it is an amazing time to reconnect with God. How many of you have a busy day? Is it just me? Everybody has a busy day. Come on, it's either you thinking you're going to school, you're like, man, as soon as I'm done with school, it's going to be finally, I'm, I'm done with homework. I'm going to, you know what I mean? I'm going to go and I'm going to go to church or I'm going to hang out. I'm going to have more time. And then you get a job, right? And you grow up and you got bills. And then you have a child and there's no, there's no time is more added to your life. In fact, it kind of slips away. And so it is an amazing opportunity, okay, uh, when there's a worship on Sunday, when there's a prayer service on Wednesday, to come and dedicate time to Him. Because during the day, okay, God knows everyone's heart here. God knows if you're spending time with Him. God knows if He knows you, okay. He knows you or He doesn't know you. It's very simple. The Bible says, I knew you or I didn't know you. And for God to get to know you, you got to come to Him. Come on. And so a lot of times when, you know, I, I love Wednesday prayer because not every single day I can spend time with Him. Okay. Not, sometimes it's, it's weeks where it's so busy. It's children. It's this thing and that. And it's so tough. And when I come on Wednesday and I see brothers or sisters here on stage and they're playing music and the holy presence of God is in this place and I just, I melt in His presence. I'm like, this is all that I really need. This is actually all that I desire. You are my one thing. This is all that I need. It melts away stress. It melts away these things because I'm in His presence. It's a different world. And it, the, the beauty about the relationship with Christ is it gets better and better. There's no scary. It's exciting and more exciting and more exciting. And it keeps going and going. And as you come to His presence... Wherever there's service, and, and it's, it's a blessing when churches can have this. I'm telling you right now, it's a blessing when a church has a time that could be dedicated to the Lord. And you could freely come and worship Him. There's a lot of Christians that are dying to be in His presence. They're giving up their life to be in His presence. Because they understand the realness of His presence. Which is so much more important than anything else you can have. Trust me, you can have anything. If, if God gives you everything and anything, you will still want Him more. The void in your heart will never be satisfied. Because He is my one thing. He is your one thing, not just mine. All right, let's go into the Word of God. Come on, open up Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Come on, someone to say Jesus. I when, when I when I first started preaching, and kind of God called me into into ministry and to preach. I said, Lord, I'm only going to preach about you. I, I don't want to preach about anything else. I only want to preach about you. I want to have the name Jesus in every one of my sermons. I don't want to talk about anything else. Everything else I don't care about. It doesn't matter. I just want to talk about Jesus. And you cannot get tired of talking about Jesus because he's the king of kings. He's glorious. He's amazing. Every day his mercies renew. Every single day he's merciful. And 
So I'm going to talk about Jesus. That's the topic of my story. What's the topic of your story? It's Jesus. It's, it's, it's the King of Kings. It's Jesus Christ, the precious Son of God. So, all right, Matthew 11, wave at me if you're there. Uh, 27, verse from 27. I'm reading ESV translation. Um, all right, Matthew 11, 27. Can I get a little bit more sound in the mic, a little bit louder, so I don't lose my voice? I got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> There's a few times where I went to work and I have no voice. And people are like, oh, were you partying? Like, what's... I'm like, I was, I was drunk on the Holy Spirit. Come on. I was just preaching the word of God. And like, like, what happened to your voice? I'm like, or they're like, oh, are you sick? I'm like, no, I'm just, I was preaching. <laughs> so that's always funny. Uh, conversation starter. Anyways, uh, Matthew eleven twenty seven. All right. This is what Jesus is saying. This is the words in red. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. Come on. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. So if you've seen the Father, or if you've seen the Son, if you... If you uh, if you talk to the Son or, or, you, or you learn about the Son, the Bible says that you can actually know the Father by knowing the Son because they're one. And he says, verse 28, come to me. Let's all say, come to me. Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, right? They say laden, is that how you say it? Laden. 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 I feel like I heard preachers say Latin. I'm like, you're wrong. Verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. <laughs> I'm just messing. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, verse 29, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Such a powerful message. Come all to me. Everyone who labors. Everyone who is in need of rest. Come to me. And I will give you rest. This is not just talking about the, the guy that works 80 hours a week. And he's tired. He's physically exhausted. This is talking about a soul situation. So the Bible says that anyone who is tired, and you know the, the, there's another verse that says, I came not for the healthy, right, but for the sick. And a lot of times like, well, I'm not sick. Did, did he come for me? Or is it, is it just he came from my neighbor who is like suffering with a disease? No, no, no. It's talking about a soul. And biblically, we have, our, all of our souls are, are sick. All of our souls are tired and we need a rest. Our soul longs to find rest somewhere. It, it's, it's, it's searching daily. And a lot of times people will find it in drugs and alcohol and in, 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 in relationships and in work and cars, anything. Our souls, they, it searches where to find rest. Our souls are, are, are sick because of the sin in the world. And Jesus said, if you come to me, everyone who is sick, everyone who labors, I will give you rest. I am able to provide and satisfy all your needs. And if you take my yoke upon you and my burden, Jesus says, it's light. And a lot of times we find ourselves searching for some kind of yoke or, or burden and a lot of times it comes in either materialistic things or in some sort of debt or in the job situation and and we were like man if I can just if I could just get this job okay if I could just get this house if I could just get in this relationship or I get this car or whatever I'm sure any of us all of us have said that at one point I, I know I did I'll be much better than I am today 
and then you come to that place God God gives it to you even though he knows this is the beauty about the father he knows this is not what you need but because you are his children he loves you he will still give it to you and God might even bless you with the thing and then you come back and you say Lord you've given this to me why is there still stress now I, the house that I prayed for you give to me but I gotta cut the grass and I got other bills and it's hard to pay and how much insurance went up and you're like why because anything in the world that could be given to you will not satisfy your soul and that's why Jesus says if you come to me okay if you are seeking today if you feel heavy and I, I guarantee you 100% every one of us in some sphere in our life we feel heaviness there is some kind of burden heavy burden that we're not meant to carry and we're carrying so Jesus says if you come to me I am the one I am the giver of rest Actually, if I give you my yoke and I give you my burden, it's easy, it's light, and it will do the will of the Father. So Jesus, in the, in the verses, he's opening up an invitation, right? He's not coming to every single person, but he's, he's preaching a sermon and he's, he's inviting everyone. All of you come to me. And he says that if you come to me, I know the Father. I know the creator of all things. And if you come to me and you get to know me, and if you see me, you have actually seen the Father. You know, the disciples said, well, who is the Father? He's like, Jesus like, what do you mean? Have you not seen me? And they're confused. Because they yet did not get to know him. The Holy Spirit has not been come to earth and didn't reveal to them who Jesus was in his fullness and so the Bible says that Jesus is opening up this invitation to all people and he says is there anyone here in this place who needs rest for their souls sometimes you and you read these verses and you say well, I'm not really laboring. I'm actually living off my parents' paycheck, right? I'm not, I don't have any heavy burdens. I don't really have issues in my life. Is these verses not for me? But Jesus says that in other, in other, in other biblical passages, he says that all of, all of our righteousness, all of our works is like dirty rags. There is not one found worthy. In fact, the Bible says that God looked upon earth to see anyone worthy. And he could not find anyone. There was not a hand that was worthy enough, the Bible says, in the Old Testament. And so he had to send his son, Jesus Christ, on earth. And so, and so God is inviting us, inviting us to come into his presence, to, to feed upon his goodness. The Bible says that I have the living waters. I, I have, and he says to, uh, in another passage that he says, I have bread and water, right, that does not expire. I have the living bread of life and the, and, and the kingdom of God is not just about eating or drinking but it's not righteousness, joy and, 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 um, and peace. And the, come on, I know my word. He is inviting every single person. That's, what he, that's all he ever did. Did he come to disciples and what did he do? Come, follow me not just for the works of God but he knows that as you come to him there's something in his presence something when the manifest glory in the presence of God something uh, comes something happens with us I guarantee you right now if the most anointed man of God came and prayed for your life your life would not change maybe for a few moments the only thing that changes our life is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Is the presence of Jesus. One of the things I wrote down here is I wrote down a lot looks like the Son 
chooses, right? That's, I love that word. It says the son chooses to whom he will reveal himself in a greater glory and the father. Okay, when you learn about Jesus and the greater glory, you're actually picking up on the Father and who he is. That's what's happening. That is the greater glory. So when Jesus says, I choose certain people, I choose certain people to reveal myself to them, right? That's what Matthew says. And so a lot of times you might think, well, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait, right? That's what usually, that's human nature. 10% laziness, right? Maybe 20, depending on who you are. <laughs> I'm like 45, so don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not judging you. But our laziness, right? I will just come here. Lord, have you ever heard a, a, a preacher come to, uh, or, or somebody that come to presence of God, and they'll sit in the back and they'll say, Lord, if you have something for my life, let that preacher call me out. Have you heard that? And then, a, uh, and, then a, and then the preacher will be like, you in the back with a great shirt. Come on out here. Come on. The Lord wants to touch you. The Lord, and he, God does it, right? He will do it. When you go to the movie theaters, he can speak to you through secular movies. That doesn't mean that's the way he wants to communicate. Come on now. That doesn't mean that's, the, that's the, the, the best way he wants to have a conversation is you come to the movie. He'll find you in the movie theater. Come on. But that's not his most exciting way to talk to you. That's not how he wants to do it. And so when we, a lot of times we'll, we'll come to and we'll say, well, if the Lord chooses me, I don't know if I'm called, but if the Lord chooses me, because it says so, it says if the Lord chooses me, then he will reveal himself to me. And he can do that because he's gracious. He's merciful. He can do that. But if you came to him, right, you're like, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to come to him and see what happens. The Bible says that, will he give you stone if you ask for bread? Or will he give you snakes? What do you think the father and the son will do if you come to him? If you come to him and say, Lord, you are my one thing. There's only one thing that I desire. There's only thing that I seek. is to be in your presence. It's to know you in a deeper way. If you come to him, God will call you, call you a man or woman after their own, his own heart. God give you a free will. And a lot of times he will choose you. He will rescue you in your moment because he's merciful. Our Father is gracious. But I'm telling you right now, and I guarantee, I'll stand by these words. If you just come to him, if you just take the time and you come to him, if you say, Lord, you know what? I'm going to take Mike up on his word. I'm going to spend five minutes every single day choosing him yeah maybe he hasn't spoken to me directly maybe a piano didn't fall on my head from the sky because I'm called for something maybe that did not happen but I'm gonna pull on him I'm going to come and ask him Lord reveal yourself to me I will come to Jesus and says, I want to know the Father. Show me him. Don't you want to, so my question is, don't you want to know who Jesus is? Don't you want to know who the Father is that Jesus represented here on earth? Don't you want to know who he is? Don't you want to know what's on his heart? Don't you want to know what he's worried about? He knows what you're worried about. You don't got to tell him. Don't you want to know what he is made of? Don't you want to get a glimpse of the glory in heaven where the, the, the Bible says that the angels are singing holy, 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 nonstop. Are you Lord God Almighty? Don't you want to get a glimpse and see a little bit of that? I do. That's why I'm a church. I'm not here... I'm definitely here for you guys. I love you guys. I'm, I'm here to see friends for sure. But I'm not just here. Or the only reason why I'm here is to see my family members. There's a lot of churches. A lot of churches out there. 
There's a lot of services out there for people to come and gather, which is, it's not a bad thing. But think of your own life. How much of yourself, of your life, do you dedicate to him? We're all on a lower average. And that's how most people are. That's the kingdom of God here on earth right now. It's four people showing up to prayer. It's five people stretching their hands during Sunday worship. People think, well, my church sucks. There's probably another revival over there. Go ahead. See it. That's what it's made of right now. But I happen to believe that if we all come together and pull on Jesus, he's going to come. I believe that if we come here on Wednesday, I know it's hard. I know there's, you got kids, you got work, and you work till 6 o'clock. I work till 6 o'clock and drive here to church. And we have my mother-in-law, God bless her, she's with a baby. That's what's happening in my life. That's everybody. We all have kids, jobs, and all these things. We all live far. Our cars are broken. Anybody else car broke? Or it's just me? Anybody else need to get gas when you forgot to get gas? And Sam's Club closed down, now you got to pay four bucks? No? Anybody, anybody have children? Anybody have work here? Jobs? Projects, I see hands everywhere. Are we not all in the same situation? We are all in the same situation. I feel like we should read more Bible because I'm just screaming at everybody. Let's go to John chapter 8. You're going to be like, why are we reading about this? You'll understand once we read through it. John chapter 8. Do you know what, do you know what this uh, chapter is about? Anybody know John chapter 8? The adulterous woman. But it's not, it, the, the chapter is not about her. So from verse uh, 2, we're going to, I'm just going to skip verse 1. Because Jesus went to Mount Mon- Mon- Olives. God bless him. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and sat down and, and, and he taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees, here's where you'll begin to see the difference between a worshiper and a scribe and a Pharisee. Or someone that knows God, someone that has a testimony, someone that has the word of God in their heart. And the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placing her in the midst. (laughs) I don't know why they would do that. And they said to him, teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law... Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? They're trying to test him. They're trying to see, oh, oh this, what's he going to do? I wonder, if he, I wonder if he will say something to me. I wonder what he's going to do in this moment. I'm going to try to trap him. They said this to test him. And they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down. He wrote his finger in the ground. He's <laughs> not caring. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Verse 8. And we're going to keep reading. And once more he sat down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one. So something, something happened there. He says, okay, whoever is here, right, here's the woman. Yes, law of Moses. I came to fulfill the law. If one of you here, it has no sin. Why don't you be the first person to throw the stone at her? We'll wait. And then something happens. One by one, they started to leave. Beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Where are the accusers? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go from now and sin no more. Verse Verse 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, so obviously the people are still there and and he's continuing his uh, teaching. And he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you're bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. 
Jesus answered, if, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. How powerful it was those words that if he's saying, they're like, Jesus, you're wrong. He's like, no, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. And they're like, okay, yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? His, his words are so powerful. He almost didn't have to prove himself. For I know where I come from and I know where I'm going, but you do not know where I'm coming from or where I'm going. To the Father, right? You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. And he, here he starts to bring in the Father in the picture. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself. And the Father who sent me bears witness about me. And then they're like, where's the Father? We have no idea what you're talking about. We just said that testimony of two people is true. You're one of them. The Father is the other one. Where is the Father? We're not seeing the Father. They said to him, therefore, where is your Father? Jesus answered, you neither, you know neither me nor my Father. <laughs> it's amazing. If you knew me, you would know my Father as well. That's it. I'm not going to read verse 20. The difference between a Pharisee and a worshiper, or the, the, the difference between a Pharisee and someone who knows the Father. Right there. When, when a woman came and sat before them, and Jesus said to them, if anyone hears without a sin, throw your first stone. And one of them, every one of them began to leave one by one. Now something happened in a moment. I believe the Holy Spirit in that moment, began to touch the Pharisees. And he be, began, began, began to like mini judge them. Because they said every one of them, or he convicted them. That's the right word I'm looking for. He convicted them in that moment. And every one of them, they brought, they're ready to stone her because the law of Moses. And Jesus says, okay, if you're without sin, you throw the first stone. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit came and it said, no. That's not me. I, I, I'm sinful. Walks away. The other guy is like, that's not me either. I'm going to walk away. The conviction of the Holy Spirit came so powerful on them. Each one of them turned around and left. Because they realized that every one of them, every one of them, every one of their souls has a void and it's struggling. And therefore they are in sin. They are, they are, they're fallen souls. They're broken people. They also need redemption. They didn't understand that to fullness, but they understand the conviction side of it. They understood in that moment without actually realizing that they need Jesus. Come on now. Not just the woman that was in sin. A lot of times we think about the woman. Oh, she was in sin and yeah, she was a sinful person because she was an adulterous woman. She probably had more than one partner or whatever. And therefore she was in sin. But God forgave her. God blessed her. He's so merciful. Merciful. What about the Pharisees? The Pharisees, without realizing completely, they, because their eyes are still closed, they realized or they knew in that moment that they're also broken people. Come to me all who burden. Come to me all who are broken. Come to me if you need rest. And in that moment the Pharisees start to walk away one by one. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit came and convicted them. And so Jesus says today, if you are broken, if you are in pain, come to me and I'll give you rest. And if you come to me, right, if you keep coming to me, all right, you will begin to transition. Come on now. You will begin to change from a Pharisee-like Christian into the one whom he knows. You will begin to know the Father. The Bible says, he's like, you don't know where I'm going. And right now you have no place in my kingdom. I can't tell you more about what I have. I am going to the Father. You have no idea where I came from. And you have no idea where I'm going. You have no idea of the things I'm possible. You have no idea the things that I have prepared for you. You have no idea. 
So you do not know me and you don't know the Father. Every one of us reading these verses should understand, should have the conviction of the Holy Spirit that I am the one who is, who is burdened today. I am the one who needs rest today. I, my soul seeks. My soul seeks him. I will want to find rest in him. That's me. Every one of us should have that moment of realization that you need the Father. Guess what starts happening the more you come into his presence? He says, my son, you need to change this about yourself. You need to forgive that person. You need to do this. You need to do that. Oh, wow. Wow. I have no right to throw the first stone. I myself need Jesus. When you start coming to his presence, he begins to cleanse you, cleanse you. When you come and you meet with him, he begins to change your life by convicting and washing you with the blood. He begins to heal you and restore you. He doesn't just want to touch you you fall on the floor and Holy Spirit is all over you and two minutes in like as soon as you leave church you're you know you're you're cutting people off on the highway again you know what I'm saying the only some people laugh and be like that's me come on now <laughs> like shoot I need the Lord come on this is the goal of church it's not just to come here and sit at these chairs <laughs> It's to, it's to be with him. That's why we gather. It's to be with him. We gather for him to be with him. That's why during worship, Lord, I praise you. I, I don't care how I feel. I don't care what happened five minutes ago. I'm going to release the word of blessing over Jesus. How many of you know you, know you can do that? How many of you understand that you can bless the Lord? Oh, my soul. Bless his holy name. That's our greatest calling is to be with him, is to come and meet him, is to spend as much time with him as, as you can. Listen, if you're spending time with the Lord at home or if you say you spend time at home with the Lord but every time there's a, a prayer night or a prayer movement and you're not coming, Ask yourself, what is the quality of my relationship with him? Because prayer night is an extension of what you do at home. You're not just intimate with your wife. You go on dates. Yes? Well, not you, Dan, yet. But, right? Or you can go on dates. But it's a combination. There's intimacy, but you also come and, and, you, do, and you do dates and whatever. You hang out. If you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and if you know him and he knows you, right, you're going to be like, where's the next prayer room open? I want to go because that's all I am. He's all the things to me. He's most important so I'm going to run to him. I'm not going to run away to Applebee's. I'm going to come to him because I'm spending time with him. That's why I'm going. It's an extension of who I am already. There's nothing wrong with, you know, obviously we have our daily lives and it's, I get it. It's really tough to come out sometimes. I totally understand. I'm not judging you. But I believe it is important to ask every one of yourselves. Ask yourself, Lord Jesus, not ask him for something, but Lord Jesus, what is the quality of my relationship with you? Do you know me? Do you know me, Jesus? I, I know about you. I heard about you. They spoke about you on Sunday. You're a real God, I think so. I haven't really felt it all the time. What is my relationship with Jesus? And it keeps going and going and you ask this question more and more and more. 
The closer you get to him, <laughs> the more you want him. The closer you get to him, the more you understand how much you actually need him. How much your soul needs rest. I follow a lot of speakers online and when they have a conference, you know, the big guys, they'll always come out and be like, oh yeah, you know, thank you pastor, this, thank you. And you know, my friends are here in the front row. They flew all the way from Orlando and I'm in Sacramento. Thank you so much for coming. You guys ever heard that? Yeah, they're, they're like, oh, shoot, our friend, our speaker is going to be in California. All right, we're going to take a day off. We're going to get a babysitter. We're going to California because our speaker friend is speaking. Come on now. We all do that. We all do that. I did that. I didn't have to get a babysitter, but I'm like, hey, uh, Benny Hinn's in town, so I, I can't come to work tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're chasing that preacher. What about him who is above everyone else? Are you going to take a day off? Are you going to get a, are you going to get a, a babysitter? Are you going to tell your wife or your husband or whatever, hey, today, it's my turn. I'm going to prayer. Husband and wife. Boyfriend, girlfriend. Engaged couples. <laughs> Come on. I'm not, I'm not just saying all you guys. I'm also trying to be funny. Come on. <laughs> Come on. That's what it's all about. Come on. I need, guys, I need him, okay? And you need him. And if I come here on Wednesday prayers, sometimes I'm broken, and I need you to be here with me because I want to I pray for you, and I want you to pray for me because we're all in this together. But if I come here all the time, and you're not coming, but I need you because you got a gift that God's given you to minister to me, but you're an Applebee's, come on now. You're broken, and I'm broken. Come on, I don't speak this loud at home, trust me. Because I'm like, yes, babe, whatever you want to do, no problem. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I mean, get scary. That's what I meant. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. As we come together, whether it's a prayer night, Wednesday prayer, Sunday, if we all join, a lot of times people came to church and be like, I didn't feel the presence of God. Or did you join the people that were praying? Did you give it your all? The Bible says that he is exalted upon the praises of one person. No. He's exalted upon the praises of his people. And we need one another. We need one another to pray for one another. We need to come together. This is, this is what the whole Christianity is all about. Love God and what? Love people. It's not so much if we don't have your ministry going yet. It's really about loving God. That's what this is whole thing about. That's what the Word of God is about, is loving Him. He gives you instructions. Come on now. He gives you instructions on what? On how to love Him. Do I have a witness in the house of the Lord? He's like, listen, this thing is hard. Okay, it's hard to know me. I'm holy. I'm going to send my only one begotten son. His name is Jesus. He's going to come in the form of a flesh, 100% man, 100% God. He is going to give himself up. He's going to be a sacrifice for you so he can make a way for you to come to me. And this is how you do it. Anyone who needs me, anyone who is tired, anyone who is burdened, anyone who is exhausted of all these life things, come to me and I will give you rest. He gave you instructions. To do what? To start a ministry? No. Instructions to, I know there's a lot of different instructions, but the Bible is about, it, it starts a relationship, it ends with a relationship. He is coming back as the king of kings. Imagine one day he's going to be on earth and all your friends are like, hey, we're going to see Jesus. I'm going to go Applebee's, man. You know, I know, like, I know he's there in Jerusalem, and I know you guys are going to just time travel or whatever, teleport yourself there. I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to get some Starbucks. No. When the king of glory comes, right, we're going to want to be with him. That is our destiny, is to be with him forever and ever, for eternity. To come with him.
He gives you instructions. And he opens up all who are hungry, all who are thirsty. Come to me. Anyone who is in burden, anyone, any one of you, I'm open. And you say, Lord, how? How are you open? Where are you? I'm there on Sunday. I'm there during worship. I'm there on Wednesday prayers. Come to me and I will give you rest. You come to me. And I will choose to reveal myself to you and reveal the Father to you and His glory. Come on, and our life is going to begin to change. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm over my time. Two minutes. That's a big clock and I didn't notice it. I'm going to pray over you guys, if you don't mind. I'm going to try to be a little bit nicer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just, I get passionate about these things because I know what it did in my life I know that it changed my life I, I said this multiple times I had people call me out in the back and I, I I traveled after ministers and I said if you Lord if you love me you know that guy will point me out of course Jesus loves you and that's why he points you out <laughs> of course he will do that but that's not the beginning or the end of your relationship with him And my life really began to change when I start going to the prayer room. We had a prayer room in the morning. Sometimes I could make it in the morning. I'm not a morning person. I went to all the night prayers and we had night uh, watches where they're 12 hours, 50 hours, whatever. We, 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 we traveled to go to prayer. Because that's what I am. I'm not a praying person. I'm a relationship person. And I happen to be in a relationship with the King of Kings, the glorious one, who I want to know. And I want him to know me. I want him, when it comes time, right, and there's crowds of people, I, wanna, I want him to lock his eyes with me. And I lock my eyes with him. And we both know. Well done. So Jesus, here you are. We talked about you. We preached about you. We sing about you. We wrote songs about you. Generation after generation. But here you are. And all of your fullness and glory. King of kings. I want him to know me. And I want to know him. Jesus, come on, you got to pray with me as well. Come on, say, Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, I want to know you, Jesus. The blessings can wait, Lord. The gifts can wait, Jesus. All the materialist things, things, all these things can wait, Jesus. I just want to know you. I want to know you in a deeper way. There's so much more to you, Jesus, than what I already know. You're so much deeper and better than that, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now for every single heart in this place. Lord, I pray over every person in this place. Whoever is tired. Whoever is burdened, Lord, whoever needs rest for their soul, may they come to you, Jesus. May you meet them in a place where they're at right now, Jesus. Wherever they are, Lord, why don't you just touch their hearts, Lord. Why don't you just whisper in their ear, Lord, that you love them, that you died for them, Lord. That you want to have a deeper relationship with them, Jesus. You are my one thing, Lord. You are one thing that we desire, Jesus. This service is all about you and for you, Jesus. Our prayers and all the things that we do in this church, Lord, it is all for you, Jesus. It is to know you deeper. It is to want to be with you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just begin to touch your people, Lord. That you just begin to convict your people, Lord, like you do, Jesus. You know our hearts better than anyone else. Holy Spirit, you know our hearts better than anyone else. I pray that you would just touch every person in this place. That you would just call them into a deeper relationship with you. That you would just call them to know you, to know the Father, Lord. I also pray that you would just reveal yourself to every person that you just reveal the father and the son to every person holy spirit reveal the father reveal the son to every person and to everyone's heart jesus
Lord, I pray that you just begin to touch our city, Lord, and not just our churches, Lord. I pray that you just begin to reveal yourself. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus, the beautiful one, Lord. The Bible says that at the last days, all people will know me. Every single person will know. Lord, so I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll begin to reveal yourself to the citizens of this town, Lord. That you just begin to reveal yourself to people of this state, Lord, to our government's Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just come Lord that your fire will pour out in Jesus name on every single person on every single person in this place and in our city Lord I believe that you are capable of doing it Jesus Lord I thank you for our time here Jesus I bless every person in this place Lord Holy Spirit I bless the families in Jesus name Lord and if you need to be healed right now be healed in the name of Jesus Lord Holy Spirit why don't you just come and touch those who need healing right now in the name of Jesus and let them be touched and healed and restored and delivered in the name of Jesus Lord Holy Spirit you can do all of these things in Jesus name Lord we thank you we honor you we give you the glory we give you the honor in this place Lord you deserve all the glory you deserve all the honor all the praise in Jesus name everyone said amen come on give it up to Jesus amen <laughs>